about Christmas. Um, you all have noticed, no, I'm guessing you all have noticed, that, um, that, I don't know if you've heard this, that in lots of um, institutions and contexts they're saying we can't really say Happy Christmas anymore. Have you heard this? It's got to be Happy Holidays because we don't want to offend people. I don't know if you heard that, yeah? Some of you have heard that? Okay, well, I read about that. I read it in a, oh, no, I heard about it on the news. There was some stuff on the news about it. But, um, so I want to unashamedly speak about Christmas because Christmas is a part of the history of this country, has been for a long time. And, um, and Christmas is a very, very important thing. But a lot of people, like I say, they're getting bent all out of shape because some people say, no, we can't say Happy Christmas, we've got to say Happy Holidays because we don't want to offend anyone, like some of the Muslims, etc. And I know Muslims, I know, I know a good few of them, and they don't find it offensive, just like we don't find it offensive if they celebrate Ramadan, that's absolutely fine. But um, the politically correct police are telling us, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. So I want to tell us why Christmas is important. Um, there was, there's a Bible verse, should appear on the screen there. And this is what the shepherds, uh, sorry, what the angels announced to Joseph. It says this, she will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now, I, my guess is that for most of us, when we celebrate Christmas, we, we're basically having a bit of a ball, really. We enjoy all sorts of aspects about it, if I'm not right. We enjoy, for example, the feasting, don't we? And we enjoy family. And we love having the little children around and seeing their little faces beaming as they open their presents. And, uh, and it's a great celebration. Perhaps you just enjoy the holiday from work. Um, or imagine how long winter would be without Christmas. Imagine that, especially a bad winter. Can you ima imagine how hard that would be? Just a long, but a dull, dreary winter. You know, for months and months. But Christmas brightens up, doesn't it? And so it's great to have Christmas to look forward to. But in many ways, I think often we're a bit like gate crashes at a party. Who's ever gate crashed a party? Okay, can I see a show of hands? You've, those, some, so if you've gate crashed a party, who's gate crashed a house party? Yeah, you gate, yeah okay, so a few of us have done it. Now, when you gate crash a house party, I remember doing this when I was a teenager. Yeah, you've managed to get into someone's party. You, yeah, you'd hear the music playing, you'd know there's a party there, so you'd just try your luck. And oh, I got into a couple of house parties. And like you'd be boogieing away and you don't know what you're celebrating, but it's great. It's, you're know, having a good old time. And, uh, and that's kind of like what, what a gate crash is. You, you're really having a great old time, enjoying the celebration, but you don't really know what you're celebrating. And that's what happens at Christmas. Often we're enjoying all the celebration, but we don't actually know the host or the person whose birthday it is or what it exactly is we're celebrating, but we're having a good time anyway. Now, I know that most of us will know that Christmas is really about Jesus, isn't it? It's about his birth. That's, he's the reason that there's Christmas at all. And so what I want to do just over the next few moments is show us from the Bible really what Christmas is about. Because it's not just about being able to say the word Christmas and not be afraid of offending people. It means a heck of a lot. Now, just imagine how many of you, I'm, be, I'm guessing there's some people here who are like well ahead of the game with Christmas. You've already got all your presents under the tree, right? Is there anyone that's got done that? You've got all your presents under the tree. You've got everything sorted, okay? Anyone got it all sorted? Yeah? Okay, Jess is the only one. Okay, so most of you are like us. Like, we, we, we're just getting on to it, okay, this, this coming week. We'll have it sorted by Christmas Day. But for Jess, okay, you're the only one that's got it sorted. You've got all the presents under the tree. Just imagine... This whole thing was a stitch up. And while everyone was here, we had some, because we got a lot of our church members missing tonight. Imagine they were doing over your houses right now, nicking all the presents. You get home and you find all the presents have gone. Okay, imagine how gutted you would be, yeah? How angry you would be. Well, I think the reason why I'm giving you this talk this evening is because in many ways we get robbed like that at Christmas when we don't understand the full meaning and importance of what it's about. Now it says here, you'll give birth to a son, this is um, the angel speaking to Joseph and talking about Mary, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Now there's a clue as to what Christmas is all about in the name Jesus, because the name Jesus means saviour. That's what it means. 
And that's why it says you're given the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now, you might think, OK, that, that kind of might just sort of go over your head a bit. You know, you're given the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. What does that even mean, really? You know, what, what, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? And, uh, and you might feel like, I don't really feel like I need a saviour. I remember being told this before I was a Christian and thinking, you know, Jesus is my saviour, that's kind of nice of him, but I'm not really in any trouble. Yeah, I don't really see the need. And, uh, but actually, this is really important. It says he will save his people from their sins. And the other strange word to us would be the word sins. Sins, because it's not a word we use nowadays. Often people think of it as a kind of old-fashioned word, you know? A word that old people used to use for really terrible people that commit murders and, and, and things like that. But it's not a word we use very much, apart from in the Bible, and it comes right out of the Bible, like Christmas. And what I want to do is just tell you what sins are first, because it's what Jesus is going to save us from. Okay, sins are all those things, essentially, that make life pretty miserable. You know, sins are the reasons that, is the reason you've got um, keys in your pocket. Because you lock your door when you, go out, when you go out because you know that there are people that are going to do over your house if they know your door's not locked, right? It's the reason we've got keys in our cars and keys on everything else. And sin is the reason that marriages break up. Sin is the reason that we've got prisons. Sin is the reason people can't get along. Sin is the reason that we've got the state that we've got in Aleppo. And what a lot of people don't realise is God, he, the, the word the Bible uses is the word hate. God hates sin. And actually that's a good thing. Imagine he wasn't bothered about it. He wasn't bothered about what's happening in Aleppo. And he wasn't bothered about some of the things that are going on in our lives. When we suffer injustice. Okay? That is all sin. There's loads of it. And so sin is not irrelevant. It's rampant. It's in all of our lives, all of us. And Jesus has come to save us from it because God hates sin. But at the same time as God hates sin and he will punish all sin, that's what the Bible teaches. Like I say, we're all here celebrating this Christmas, having a good time, not sure what we're celebrating. Well, it's right there in the Bible and I'm just telling you what it is that we're celebrating. Okay? God hates sin. He's going to punish all sin. Okay? But God sent Jesus as a saviour to save us from our sin because he loves us. In fact, we cannot begin to comprehend how much God loves us. But I, all I can tell you is this, he loves us this much that he was prepared to watch his own son Jesus die on a cross. That's how much he loves us. Most of us wouldn't watch our children die for our best friend, let alone people that have little regard for God. And so this is what Christmas is all about. Jesus will save his people from their sins. Now, the last thing that I just want to draw your attention to is the word his. He will save his people. Now, everyone sins. The Bible makes that clear. OK, let me tell you what the probably the worst sin is. OK, when God looks at the world, he sees a world that's pretty much godless. Most people don't really have much regard for him. And he, yeah, he sees families breaking up and... Men cheating on women, women cheating on men. He sees people fighting, people arguing, people having resentment against one another. He sees wars and, and injustice everywhere. And he sees a, a pretty much a godless world, a world that has rejected him. Yeah, the very worst thing that we can do is to live in a world like that and say, I want to live a godless life myself. I don't really want God in my life. That is, because what we're doing is we're identifying ourselves then with the very world that he is going to judge. And it's a good thing that he's going to judge it. Because otherwise people like Hitler get away with everything that they did. And all the other bad people we think about. But we, if we're a part of that world saying, I want to be a part of that world, I don't want to be a part of a world with God. I don't want God in my world. That is probably the worst thing that, he, that we can do. And when it says he will save his people, who are his people? It's all those that will say, actually, I don't want to identify with a godless world. I want God in my life. That is how we become his people. And that is what Christmas is all about. It's about the saviour of a world 
who saves us from our sins, from all the consequences of our sins. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to um, listen to a song being sung to us um, by H and Gemma. Thank you, H and Gemma. Thank you so much. <laughs>